That's the so, quicker. So welcome uh, to the second session, despite the fact that we are um, uh, having a few technical issues. This is all about effective online uh, and in-person networking, because networking is coming back from next week. And what that means is we are going to be allowed to hug people, apparently. I heard that yesterday from uh, Michael Gove. I hope he doesn't want to hug. Um, so we're going to talk about the strategies for networking, but online still remains. I think we're going to have a bit of a hybrid going forward. So, Russell, can you move things forward for me in the first one? So I'm going to talk about strategies first in terms of general networking, so whether it's digital, online, or um, or face-to-face. -face. And the first three, where, when, and how, are what I call logistical decision-making. So it just decides whether or not it fits into your time scale. So where is it physically, geographically? Is it within my region? Is it online? Does that work for me? When is about your body clock. If you're a morning person, clearly you're on this call. What that means is you're okay going to a networking event physically at 7.30 in the morning. If you don't come alive until you've injected coffee into your eyeballs uh, until 10 o'clock and you're a grumpy so-and-so, so then why would you recommend going to a networking event at breakfast? You're better off going to the evening ones on that basis. Um, and the next one, the third one is how does the network work and does that work for me? Is it something that I like the look of, the structure, the format, etc.? So logistical reasons, where, when and how. The next three are emotional reasons. Why am I even going? What am I trying to get out of it? And who do I want to meet? So if we go to the next couple of slides, the first one will tell you, looking at the demographics of target groups, do you want to meet micro businesses, small businesses or SMEs? Or are you more interested in mid-corporate, corporate and multinational corporate businesses? Because the reality is networking, particularly in the UK, tends to attract more of the left-hand side, micro, small and SME businesses. If you're looking to get into a large corporate organisation, unless you go to a very specialist event aimed at their particular requirements, then the chances are you're not going to meet those people at a particular network. So that's the first consideration in terms of your target group. The next one is you're looking at the type of businesses that you want to engage with. So again, pre-start, new start, sole trader, owner managed, partnerships, cooperatives, social enterprises, PLCs. You need to look at your target audience, your target groups, your target sectors, and your target types of businesses. Because again, more often than not, you'll find that the left-hand side are more heavily represented at what you call traditional networking, but maybe partnerships and social enterprises are also going to be represented at some of those. But if they're not in the room and they're your target audience, don't be spending your time, effort and energy going networking because someone invited you. I know people who go to the opening of an envelope or an opening of a bottle of wine more often because they've been invited to do so. OK, so next thing we want to look at is we want to look at preparation for the event itself. OK, so we need to know the structure and the format. And I'll tell you why I, 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 this is important. I used to run, go back a bit, Russell. We, I, the, I used to run an organization called the Business Network many years ago. And it was a lunch-based event. And it was basically, um, you'd arrive for 12, sit down for lunch at 12.30, uh, network around the table, guest speaker, finish at two. Works really well. Um, it's still being run to this day in West Yorkshire and it, it, it's doing really well. Uh, however, you have to do a four or five minute presentation around the table. The amount of people who turned up and you'd say to them, right, you know, are you ready for your four or five minute presentation around the table? And you'd look like you'd, you'd, you'd ask them to, I, I don't know, whatever the worst feeling could be for them because they weren't ready for the structure, they weren't ready for the format and they were never going to present themselves well. So understand what's expected of you. Is there some flexibility in the hosting? I'm going to come on to that in a second, particularly for, for um, when it comes to, to online. Uh, and can you get details of who's going to be there? And, and people say, you know, we can't do that for GDPR. We don't want their email address, the inside leg measurements, the, you know, second uh, uh, um, cousin's twice removed uh, uh, phone number. We just want to know who are the type of people who are coming to this event, whether it's this one or previous ones. If you know there's people that you're going to go and, and meet, why not reach out to them on LinkedIn in advance and promote the fact that you're attending on LinkedIn, say, I'm delighted to be going to the XYZ network tomorrow. I'm delighted to be part of Brand Yorkshire, which is reopening on you know, May the 29th or whatever it might be. And the last thing about preparation is don't rush. Don't think, oh, it starts at 12 and finishes at 2, but we don't sit down till 12.30, so I can get there at 12.28 
and it actually I don't really need to see the the notices at the end so I can leave at sort of 1 45 because that's not networking get there early take advantage of the opportunities to meet people and stay a bit later because what if you meet the ideal person at that network and they say do you want to hang around for a coffee and have a quick chat oh I can't really because I didn't put any time in my diary to deal with the mop up from the opportunity so next thing we want to consider is looking at online particularly is a lot of these online networks and you can probably tell from my tone i'm not a massive fan okay because the structure's too fixed and do they create the opportunity for you i've not found many that give you the opportunity to do what you'd want to do what they're trying to do a lot of the times is replicate a face-to-face -face networking event it just doesn't work in a online platform or it works reasonably well but not well enough so you might need to hijack things and have some flexibility uh, to ask for a potentially different approach so i'm going to give you an example i was at a networking event online early doors of, of lockdown and there were 28 people i still remember because i counted 28 for uh, two minute presentations so my, my, my worry was that there's an hour I'll never get back. Um, and everyone went round and went, this is me. My name's Trevor. I'm an accountant. My name is James. My name is Sheila, blah, blah, blah. And it was as dull as hell. Okay. And it was everyone just waiting. It was like waiting in the, in the queue at Argos for your turn. Um, and when it came to my turn, I'd already asked in advance, can I have a screen share? And, and the organizer went, uh, yeah, what do you want a screen share for? I said, it, it, it's fine. As long as you can give me a screen share, that's absolutely fine. And all I did on the screen share was show them one diagram and ran through my presentation with one slide, one diagram, an infographic that I then walked through and talked through. And that's where you need that flexibility to hijack what is, you know, everybody else does the same. So what, and the amount of people out of those 28 who came up to me afterwards and said, I wish I'd thought of that. I wish I'd done that was it was 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 significant and, and you can do whatever you want as long as you plan to do it okay so the next thing you need to think about is some quick tips just one at a time russell please one at a time one at a time go back thank you very much okay so the first thing is on a screen stand out this isn't a networking event so it doesn't really matter but if you're going networking stand out in something that stands out on a screen so bright red lime green purple whatever it might be and my only tip i'm going to give is this is the only thing i know ladies about fashion you can accessorize that's it game over i'm done that's my thing accessorize that's me being gok one wear something bright and something that stands out so i'm trying to find you okay next thing russell is um think about your screen name so this isn't networking, but if it was networking, many of you just got your name on there. Some of you got the name of your blooming phone, you know, Fred Samsung or Samsung 325 or whatever. Change your screen name to have your name and the name of your company. It makes a massive difference. OK, next thing is you want to think about the chat protocol. Um, if you're going networking online, you've got to consider the fact that you're not going to get to speak to everybody or see everybody. And we encourage this this morning on the Yorkshire Sales Sprint is put your LinkedIn URL in the chat function. And on the basis of doing that, make sure that you, if you're doing it and nobody else is, ask the organizer, say to somebody and say, is this one of the networks that we put our details in the chat function for everybody to share and see? And oh yeah, yes it is. So, you know, if they're not doing it well, you can still do that. What you must do at the end of the session is capture all that information. So you just um, um, highlight the whole chat, Control and A, Control and C to copy it, and Control and V into a Word document. There's your follow up. Okay. Next thing we need to think about is when you captured that, what are you going to do with it? Don't troll people. Don't follow up everybody and anybody. You wouldn't do that at a networking event. Look at the people who might be relevant, where you can solve a problem for them, where you can build a relationship with them. Once you've captured the details, are they worth and are you worth their consideration? Okay. Next thing is, Russell, um, is, as I say, request the screen share in advance. Don't do it when you arrive. Request it in advance because the organisers might struggle. Don't know what we've done this morning with our struggle, but um, request a screen share in advance so that the organisers know. And there's no reason why they should not not give you that. Okay. So moving on from the, 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 the principal tips. Hang on, Russell. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. So we, you've got to go into understanding how do you stand out not just from what you look like and how you run your sort of presentation but what does a pitch look like 
And I'm going to talk about four words, okay? So going on to the next screen, Russ, one at a time, please. So the first, uh, the first part of pitching, the first key word is why. What is the impact of doing business with you? The second key word is how. So what will be the process of working with you? I'll explain this in a second. The third key word is what are your products and services? Now, this is really important in that order. Nobody cares what you do. Nobody cares you're an accountant based in Horsforth since 1999. With all due respect, so what? What you need to think about is what's the impact of doing business with a, a 1999 long established uh, accountant in Horsforth, for example. How would you work with me if I was going to work with you and then tell me what your products or services are? And the last key word is my favorite word in pitching is the word imagine. Imagine just means that you can share visions and pictures with people. People can understand themselves working with you. So I'll give you an example. One of the things that I have designed over the lockdown is an online sales academy. And basically that's really an accessible uh, format for sales training and, 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 and webinars, etc. That's the what, big deal, so what? So if I start with imagine, so imagine you've got a sales team that you want to get back up to speed after lockdown. So imagine there's an organization out there that's got a whole suite of content available, readily available, that's gonna make a real impact in terms of their confidence, skills and performance. How it works is blah, 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 blah. And what it is, is just an online sales academy. So that's how you do a pitch, whether it's online or in person, because you usually get a minute or two minutes, why, how, what, and using the word imagine to, to paint the picture. Okay, thank you. Russell. So the next thing is about, uh, I mentioned about being memorable. This could be face-to-face -face, or it could be um, certainly uh, on, a, on an online, uh, a digital platform. Use a picture or a decal, an infographic's fabulous. As a single screen, an infographic could be brilliant to showcase what you do, some uh, challenging percentages or questions or stats or whatever it might be. An animation or video, website or case study. Um, I've seen people take a, 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 a video on their phone. People say, tell me about your business. They'll go, here's our new animation video, 45 seconds, show the video. Why wouldn't you do that as part of an introduction? It's so much more powerful. And like, like um, Paul said, you know, looking at their um, uh, online YouTube is easier than him babbling on, for example. So if you've got some creds, some credentials, some animation, some video, a case study, a decal, a picture, or an infographic, use it as collateral at networking. Okay, that's part of your pitch. So next one, Russ. So let's go about, let's go into one at a time. Let's go into room tips. Okay. So networking is really about short burst meetings, but it's not about being rude. It's about, you know, spending five, six, seven, eight, nine minutes with somebody and then work, moving around the room. Because the reality of that is if you're not moving around the room and you're staying with somebody, you're not letting them network either. Okay. So it's about treating it as a, maybe an hour and a half might be a chance to meet five or six people, seven or eight people. Okay. Next thing, you know, think about the output is about let's explore this. Let's have a coffee. Let's see if we can take it further. Networking is not the format and the forum to sell. It's not the format and forum to close deals. It's not the format and forum to get a contract out. It's a format and forum to explore the potential to work together. Okay. Following on from that, I'm going to say to you, 95% of people have got some nerves or apprehension going into a room full of people, probably more now because of, uh, of you know, social distancing and COVID, etc. But nerves are natural and it's your parents' fault. And it's your parents' fault because when you were a kid, you were told, don't talk to strangers. So when you're a grown-up and you're going to a room full of 60 people you don't know, it's just ingrained in you. This won't be very comfortable. So it's quite natural to be nervous. And actually, I'd say to people, embrace that nervousness and don't be afraid to say to somebody, Oh, it's quite uncomfortable in these kind of rooms, isn't it? And the reality of that is people warm to you for being honest and authentic and true to yourself. It's not about being bol bolshy and bold and loud and all that kind of, because those people stand out for the wrong reasons. Next thing about in-room is be self-aware. How do you come across? Are you a bit of a prick? Or are you somebody who, for example, I'm really, really experienced at networking and, and therefore really confident, but I don't want to come across as that at a networking room. 
because people will go, oh, look at him. Because 95% of people are nervous or apprehensive. Why would I not want to be like the majority? So I'll say to people, oh, it's quite nerve wracking in here. Isn't it? Lots of people, you know, it's one of those things that people are not comfortable with. I don't go in and go, right, okay, watch and learn. This is going to be brilliant. It's not about me. It's not about my confidence level. It's about my self-awareness and whether that can be frightening or off-putting or whatever it might be, okay? Next thing is don't approach people who look unapproachable to start with. You've got to get off to a good start when you're going in, into a networking room. So look around for someone who is, first of all, on their own, secondly, who's got a smile on their face, and thirdly, are looking welcoming and friendly. What you don't do is look and go, oh, he looks a grumpy old sod. Let's go and start there and see how that goes, you know. Can I join you? What do you want? You know, it's not a great start. You're not going to get your nerves out of the way by getting off to a bad start. So make a tactical first approach. That could be based on age. It could be based on height. It could be based on gender. It could be based on smiley face. It could be based on going to see someone that you already know. But getting off to a good start in a room is really, really important. Okay. Next few things, Russell, is it's not about you. It genuinely isn't about you. No one cares about you. What you've got to do is show an interest in the other person. And that's about building relationships and building rapport. And that means going down to the next one is just looking at saying, understanding what listening's about. So you're not, you're actively listening, not looking around going, well, this is a bit boring. Who else can I find? And you constantly like a meerkat looking for the next important person coming in the room. So, oh, sorry, what did you say? You're based in where? Yeah, no chance. You've got to be actively listening and showing an interest in people. Okay. Now, in a room, there's a connection finder and a QR code on LinkedIn. So instead of having a business card that's covered in COVID, just use your QR code on your LinkedIn to go, there's my details, let's connect. There's a connection finder on LinkedIn, which has got the two pictures of the two blue heads with the plus sign next to it. Again, anyone in the room who's got Bluetooth will be able to connect with them on that basis. That's what technology can do for you, okay? Um, don't get stuck with someone and don't stick with somebody for, for a long time. If you're stuck with somebody, it's very okay to say to somebody, well, it's been really fascinating. Thanks very much. I just promised I'd go and catch up with or I need to do something. It, and, if, and, and if it feels inappropriate or it feels as though you're getting sort of bombarded or someone's overly you know, uh, friendly or just try to sell to you, whatever it might be, you don't owe them anything if they're not polite and following the protocol. If they're polite, you don't want to leave them on their own. We'll come to that in a second, okay? So... Um, it's always being respectful of others and treating people like you'd like to be treated. Now, I say that unless you're the person who doesn't recognize their own self-awareness. So it's about being respectful. You don't go to networking to meet as many people as possible. You're not on roller skates. You're not on a skateboard. You're not trying to get around the room and collect business cards. It's about taking your time to understand, get to know, explore and see how things are. OK, so a couple of other things to finish in terms of room dynamics. People on their own, unlikely to say no to an approach. I approach people, I'll say to somebody, um, do you mind if I join you? It's not a hard question, is it? Do you mind if I join you? The chances are they're stood on their own, 95% chance of being nervous. Uh, please do. They're not going to go, I'd rather you didn't, actually. I'd rather you didn't join me. I'd rather you sort of uh, left me on my own with a glass of wine looking really nervous. So people who you approach people on their own individually, okay? Second thing is you're looking at pairs Pairs are often just um, two people who have in conversation. And when I say to people on a networking workshop in a room, I'll say, stand like you would stand when you're talking in a networking event. And they usually stand like that at what I call an open angle. So it's probably about 90 degree angle. So they are talking to each other. But from this side, they're saying it's OK to join. From this side, they're saying it's OK to join. Look for your open pairs. Look for people who are in conversation, especially when you get there late or actually the network's working. You'll find less and less people on their own. So find a pair, drop your shoulder a little bit so you're a bit polite. Say, oh, do you mind if I join you? And they'll let you join. But don't dive into the conversation. Do not bool in. It's a, well, thanks. I'm here now. I don't care what you were talking about. Let me tell you about me. Okay. Next one is small groups are usually pairs that have had a third person added to them. And then they get to fours and fives. I guarantee there isn't one person holding court with three or four other people. In a, in a group of four or five, there's probably usually a couple of pairs there that just happen to be standing in the same place. So again, you're looking for people around the edges. It's a bit like a wildebeest herd and you being a, a lioness. 
you're looking for someone on the edge that you can engage with, not obviously rip the throat out and, and, and eat from that basis. But uh, it's the same principle of looking for the dynamics of where people are accessible and available. OK, and the last one is we're going to talk about parking. And the last one, Russell, is dumping. OK, parking is where you take somebody with you having had a conversation. So let's say I was with Russell at a networking event. And I said to Russell, you know, do you know anybody else in the room? He said, not really. I said, do you fancy going networking? If he says no, I've asked the question, that's fine. If he says yes, let's go and meet some people. We'll approach another solo. Do you mind if we join you? I'm Nick, this is Russell. Let's have a conversation. We become a three and we stay and I stay in the conversation. But the skill and fun of dumping is I want rid of Russell because Russell's as dull as hell, okay? And let's say I know... Naomi, for example, and Naomi's on her own. I'm going to say, Naomi, this is Russell. Russell, this is Naomi. Um, I'd love to introduce you to each other. Russell doesn't know anybody in the room. Uh, he's, he's new to this network. I know Naomi, you know everybody on, on here. So I'm going to leave you in your capable hands. Great to meet you, Russ. Great to meet you again, Naomi. See you later. And I can walk away. And I can walk away because I don't need to stay in the conversation. And, and that's called dumping. Okay. So last couple of things. Quick, we'll go through this very quickly. Engage the organizers beforehand. Who's there? Who's going to be there? Can you help me? Set yourself a little target. Who are the people that you want to meet? How many people do you want to meet? Make it easy, two or three. Don't make it 17. The organizers are not going to help you find 17 people. Same as on a networking online, wear a standout outfit. Uh, now, I don't know what that is in terms of no one wears ties anymore. I've got a couple of networking shirts that my daughter definitely knows I'm going networking. She'd say to me, you go networking, Dad, yeah. One looks like the boy in the striped pyjamas. It's Marks and Spencer's best, but it's hideous. But it works in a networking room because I don't look like I'm wearing white or grey or blue. Use some open questions. Who, what, why, where, when, how, show some interest. Next thing, Russ, is take something to write some notes on. You're going to meet five, six, seven people. Don't write all over the business card. It's rude, okay? Next thing, prepare your follow-up. There's only three outcomes from a networking event. One, it was great to meet you. We're not likely to work together. Second, it was great to meet you. He's the information I promised you. Third, it was great to meet you. He's a confirmation of our coffee meeting next week. So have some templated emails ready because the amount of people who go networking and never, ever follow up is astonishing, is astonishing. Okay, so last couple of things. Get there early. Don't plan to rush off. Take some collateral with you and practice your pitch. Try to be different or memorable. So don't stand out by saying, my name's Trevor from uh, Horsforth. What you basically want to do is try and be different or memorable by being why, how, what, and imagine, and have a small target list. So there's your networking do's and don'ts. Um, there's an action plan to take after the event very quickly. Is Russell, just go through those. Update your CRM. Make sure you comply with GDPR. Send your follow-up that you prepared. Include any visuals that you've used in a pitch or on online, uh, post event LinkedIn connection, and then follow up professionally. So it's very quick. It's very, uh, um, uh, oops, I need to stop sharing that. It's very quick in terms of tips and skills, but we're going to get back out there. I'm going to take you one quick thing I want to show you. The handshake might be dead. So one of my connections, a lady called Mona Norman, said this is how that she's got. Um, well, she, she's got Arabic, Geordie, and Yorkshire roots. So basically, she says people put the hand over the heart, so right hand over the left heart, and then nod gently while maintaining eye contact. So thank you for that. We're going to get rid of Rakimi, whoever he is. So thank you for that. Russell, do you want to stop the share? My contact details are there. Contact details of the whole of the Yorkshire sales sprint are also on the slide deck, which we're going to send to you electronically afterwards uh, in the Yorkshire Sales Sprint LinkedIn group. So a couple of things I want to talk to you about <clears throat> is one is the Yorkshire Sales Sprint LinkedIn group. Um, it's where we host all the resources. So please, you've been invited, most of you. If you haven't been invited, please look up on LinkedIn, Yorkshire Sales Sprint group. Uh, request to join, we'll get you in there. And also on YouTube, just search Yorkshire Sales Sprint. And there's a YouTube channel with all the videos from all of the events that we've run so far, including these two will be on there later on today. 
And there's also on Eventbrite, if you're looking for the next event, but that will also be on the, the slide deck and in the uh, LinkedIn group, the details of the next event on that basis.